All right. What is up, Tycoons? What's up, traders? Super excited for today's video. Coming at you guys with another natural gas update. All right. Now, natural gas pops really hard today. We saw boil up by 8, 9, 10% at certain points in the day. We're going to go ahead and cover some of the recent news surrounding um, you know, natural gas and the sector as a whole. Uh, we're also going to, in today's video, take a look at the open interest okay, for both Boyle and UNG. Uh, this is the open interest of the option contracts, and there's some interesting data here. We're seeing tons and tons of bullish call option data. Uh, we're going to review those as well as the natural gas futures. We're going to take a look at the spot price as well. And then we'll go over the daily chart for Boyle and UNG. Um, now, a full disclaimer, the content provided in this YouTube channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. Myself and any individuals that appear in this channel are not registered financial advisors. Trading in stocks, bonds, and commodities, and crypto involve a significant risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. So be sure to read through the full disclaimer before moving forward. And we'll go ahead and start off here with this headline here, uh, talking about how U.S. weekly oil and gas rate count falls by the most since February, right? Now, this is according to Baker Hughes. Uh, U.S. oil and gas production grew very rapidly in the first two months of 2023, a delayed response to the high prices and upturn in drilling that characterized much of last year following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But growth is set to decelerate sharply as the more recent slumps in prices curtails new drilling and well completions, with the impact evident by the fourth quarter of 2023. U.S. energy firms cut most oil and natural gas rigs in a week since February, with energy services firm Baker Hughes said in its closely uh, followed report on Friday. The oil and gas rig count, an early indicator of future output, fell by 7 to 748 in the week to May 5th. Despite this week's rig decline, Baker Hughes said the total count was still up 43 rigs or 6% over this time last year. Um, now, if we take a look at this, the news is just absolutely insane, guys. If you ask me, um, you know, they clearly, you know, are very divisive and try to spin things out. Uh, we see here this lady, uh, Amy, okay, and let's just call her Karen because let's be honest, that's what she is and that's what she looks like. She's writing this article here about how natural gas is racist, I guess, somehow in the Florida panhandle, a black community's progress is threatened by a proposed liquefied natural gas plant. Um, they run into a whole article about it, but basically saying that leaders in North Point St. Joe had big plans for tourism, real estate, and even a black history museum. Then they found out almost by accident that elected officials had begun pushing the LNG terminal for years without telling them. Not long ago, this rural coastal town in the Florida panhandle was home to a thriving black community with locally owned shops and restaurants and plentiful jobs at the nearby paper mill. Their community fell into decay after the paper mill closed in 1999. But today, residents have big plans for restoring and uniting it finally with the white side of town. Now, I mean, they're literally they're literally calling it the white side of town. Right. I mean, just absolutely insane. Um, you know, and here's the thing, guys, the paper mill has been closed since 1999. All right. It's 2023. We've had 23 years to actually do something there uh, with that land and, you know, make this tourism, real estate in, in Black History Museum. Right. Um, obviously, you know, that place is not really being you know done much with. All right. Uh, that paper mill and, you know, that old paper mill that's closed. They are looking to make it a uh, liquefied natural gas plant, an LNG plant. OK. Now, this will provide jobs, all right? What people don't talk about is, you know, there was plentiful jobs at the nearby paper mill. Well, that paper mill is gone. It's been closed since 1995. So this LNG plant, this liquefied natural gas plant could bring it back to a thriving community with those jobs and replace those jobs that were lost from the paper mill, all right? Um, so just how to go about this. I mean, you have to be very, you have to take things with a grain of salt when you're reading the news, whether it comes to natural gas, whether it comes to politics, anything like that. Um, you know, it's very skewed, right? And there's always a, a mission behind it. Now, <clears throat> furthermore, we can take a look here and cover some international news. Um, Chinese giant eyes LNG imports with talks of, of rejoining a $100 billion plus Saudi gas project. Right. Uh, the state owned Chinese player has been recommended to invest in Jafura unconventional gas development. Uh, this is pretty big news. Um, you know, as we know, China is reopening right now. Uh, and a lot of the news surrounding China right now is going to be affecting energy prices. Right. Not really just natural gas, but also oil prices. Um, you know, if we see, um, you know, an increase in their economy um, or really rather a decrease in their economy, even after the reopening of the, you know, uh, zero restriction, you know, COVID-19 policy. 
uh, that could hurt energy prices more, right? So that's something to keep in, in mind. You know, if China starts reporting, uh, you know, weak economic data, that's definitely something that could occur. Now, Hong Kong receives its first LNG shipment to help phase out coal. Uh, this is something that the U.S. is also doing. They're help, they're trying to uh, phase out coal. Uh, Biden's, you know, been talking a lot about that. Got some policies for that. And Hong Kong receives its first ever shipment of liquefied natural gas amid a wider push to reduce reliance on coal. An LNG vessel carrying the cargo arrived in the city on Saturday to support commissioning work for an offshore import terminal commencing this week. Um, the rapid decline in LNG prices is rekindling plans from Hong Kong to Vietnam. To to begin importing the fuel. The financial hub had hoped to start importing the super chilled fuel sooner, but its plans were delayed by COVID-19 and then last year's global energy shortages. Coal makes up almost a quarter of Hong Kong's electricity mix and authorities have previously set an interim target to cease use for the fuel for daily electricity by 2035. Now, uh, we can see here in more international news that Europe gas extends drop as weak demand bolsters inventories. The EU storage facilities are more than 60% full. Uh, favorable weather and weak competition from Asia help Europe. Now, um, you know, this chart right here is essentially showing us that Europe has more stored gas than usual. The facilities are over 60 percent full. Um, and this is, you know, the percentage right here. And we can see by the timeline. And, you know, there was they were on this sharp decline. All right. And now they're actually above over 60 percent full. We've seen an increase in inventories. Um, it is injection season right now. Now, European natural gas prices extended a five week decline as muted domestic demand defused the need for more aggressive purchases to fill up inventories. Benchmark next month futures fell to trade um, at their closest levels since July of 2021. Prices more than half since the start of the year amid stable supply, mild weather, and stronger con contributions to power generation from renewables. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine caused energy prices to skyrocket last summer, Europe has seen a much calmer start to 2023 with imports of LNG from across the globe making up for large amounts of curtailed supplies from Russia. Inventories in the region are now more than 60% full, some 20 percentage points higher than the average of the last five years after a month of net injections. Now, this is something that the U.S. has been able to capitalize off of, and the U.S. has really become an, a major exporter of LNG, um, you know, here recently, right, in recent times. And, you know, that's something big um, for America and for the U.S. Uh, and, you know, something that's been benefiting a lot of these LNG companies. Now, this is a unique period where it appears that the main demand centers of Europe and East Asia are already well supplied going into the summer, which lays a strong foundation for building up storages going into the winter. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next one here. And we're actually going to take a look at the natural gas futures monthly chart. And uh, the main reason I'm showing you this is because, you know, right now we're really trading in between a range, right? This is our overhead supply zone here. This is our demand zone to the bottom. Um, you can see, you know, it's a little bit hard. You'll see it clear on the next chart, but the, we've basically come down into this demand zone about three or four times. And we've seen buyers and strong demand really step in and push price higher each time that we have stepped in there. Right. And this demand zone is this is a very macro demand zone. Right. Remember, this is the monthly time frame chart. And we can see, you know, we found demand in here. And really, each time in the past that we've come into this zone, we've seen a push up in prices. Right. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to always explode, um, but this is an area where there's historically lots of demand, and we're going to see if that demand is still going to be present. Right. If we zoom in a little bit and go to our uh, four hour chart, um, give me one second. Let me pull it up. All right. Sorry about that. Here's our four hour chart. Right. So, you know, here we come into that demand zone. We get a nice doji reversal candlestick and then a big push up right over here, over here. And uh, we came very close to it here recently um, after filling the gap down. So I made a video last week, um, you know, kind of showing you guys like, hey, we do have this wedge pattern with a gap down. Last time we had that, we had it over here and we were entering into our supply zone. We got a very textbook breakdown retest of the trend line and then we pushed down and filled the gap. If you're not familiar with gaps, take a look at this candle and this candle. There's this big space in between it known as a gap. I like to chart these up and make it nice, bright blue. So that way, you know, it's noticeable to me and I can be prepared, right? They fill about 90% of the time. Uh, the big question is when they're going to fill, not if they're going to fill. And natural gas has been filling its gaps here pretty quickly as of uh, recently. Um, you know, uh, we did end up just coming down and filling this gap here uh, and we saw a strong rebound afterwards. Right. So, um, you know, that big push down may have just been looking for a gap fill. And ultimately, we saw a strong push up today. Uh, we're still below a lot of our major levels that we really need to get above for us to go bullish. 
Um, right. These are the Fibonacci retracement levels. Uh, the three most common and well-respected are the 61.8, the 50% and the 38.2. So you see we had this large move down and then we've retraced and we're starting to consolidate now. Um, if we can, you know, break through these levels, then we have a chance of going back bullish again on the natural gas futures. Uh, remember, you use the fibs to identify trend continuation versus reversals because nothing moves in a straight line down or in a straight line up. Rather, you get a move down, a retracement, and then a continuation of that trend, right? So you see here, move down, retrace, continue the trend, right? Or you get a move up, retracement, continuation of that trend. So we're looking to see if we're going to get if this larger move down, if this was just a healthy retracement up to the 50% level, and we're going to continue that downtrend, or you can spot reversals, right? So if you move up, retrace, and you start to consolidate and break through there, you can spot a downside reversal. And if you move down, retrace, consolidate, and break through there, you can spot a potential upside reversal, right? So that's what we're looking for. If you're looking for things to go bullish, we need to really consolidate through here and break through these levels on the futures. Uh, if we can do that, then we could potentially get some type of a reversal. Keep in mind that Boyle and UNG are going to be trading off of the futures, right? And they suffer from something known as contango, uh, which essentially what they're doing is... Um, you know, they're selling uh, cheaper futures contracts and buying more expensive future contracts. So if the futures are really just trading sideways as they are here, you can see later in the uh, Boyle and UNG charts, it really hasn't been looking as good, right? It doesn't really show as much sideways action. We're actually steadily creating lower lows. When we go back to the futures, um, you know, we actually made a low and a higher low here. So um, there is a little bit of discrepancy. And, you know, the main reason of that is uh, the contango along with many of the other decay factors. I do actually have an entire video dedicated uh, to, you know, the myths and the dangers surrounding uh, Boyle and both UNG uh, when it comes to the decay. Uh, that is a really great video uh, that you can learn a lot from uh, whenever you get a chance. I think it's a really great watch. Just search exactly trades, Boyle decay or UNG decay, and it should pop right up. Now, <clears throat> one of the you know, things that I like to go over, especially on these YouTube channels, is um, some different potential strategies that you guys can use to help give you an edge in the market. And so, um, you know, one of the simplest ones that I think there is to cover is going to be the RSI and the MACD and actually using these um, together, right? Now, when it comes to the RSI, what we're actually going to be doing is looking for divergences. So I've highlighted multiple divergences here. So in this case, you can see that we're making higher highs clearly in this uptrend, right? But if you look at your RSI, remember, that's your relative strength index. So it's going to measure the relative strength of whatever it is that you're looking at, right? And so if something's going up, the relative strength should be going up with it. That's not always the case. Oftentimes, you can spot divergences. So in this case, we have a high, higher high, higher high. And we're actually making highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower highs on the RSI, right? And we're respecting that trend line there. That's a term known as bearish divergence, and it's an indicator you could see some type of bearish activity. Now, no one strategy is ever going to be 100% guaranteed, but when you can start to combine a couple of strategies together, uh, that can possibly help give you an edge, right? And so we we've used the RSI to spot a bearish divergence now. Let's use the MACD, all right? In the MACD, you want to pay attention to the red line. And when it crosses down below, that's a potential exit signal, right? So we see this bearish divergence here, and then we see the crossover down below. And sure enough, price action sees a very strong move to the downside. Now, the opposite of that is going to be bullish divergence with an entry signal, right? So here we have a low and then a lower low, right? So clearly it's in a downtrend, right? If we look at the RSI, we're actually making a low and a higher low. So we're increasing in relative strength as price is going lower. And then what do we see? The red line cross above the yellow line here on the MACD, and we get a strong move to the upside, right? So, you know... That's something that I like to do. Um, now, currently, if we look at our chart now, we've been building bullish divergence for a very long time. And notice how we're really stuck in this range here, right? In between 187 all the way up to about 280. Um, we've really just been trading in this range on the spot price of natural gas. And, you know, we have this very long-term bullish divergence building up, right? We have a low here. This is from October of 2022. And then we have our new lows over here in, you know, April and May of 2023. So really, you know, for six months, we've been building some bullish divergence and haven't really seen any strong move to the upside. We've gotten many pops, right? And there's been good times to capitalize where I've day traded or swung trade. 
um, you know, Boyle or maybe UNG, some call options. Um, you know, there has been good opportunities, but take a look at the RSI, right? We're building this bullish divergence. We have low, we have higher lows here, higher lows here again. And so we're continuing to make these higher lows in the relative strength index as the price is continuing to go lower. All right. So, um, you know, we're not really seeing any clear uh, signals on the MACD, though. All right. And obviously, as I mentioned, no one strategy is going to be 100 percent. And so clearly, you know, we haven't gotten a strong move to the upside based off bullish divergence purely alone. And the red line and the yellow line on the MACD have pretty much been trading right along with each other, not really giving any clear signals, right, versus across to the downside right here with bearish divergence. We're making higher highs. We're making lower highs here, and then we get a clear signal across to the downside. Over here, we have bullish divergence, lows, lower lows, lows, higher lows, cross over to the upside, get a strong pop. We're not really seeing any of that right now, all right? Uh, when it comes to the MACD, uh, we're not getting any follow through or any clear direction. So that's something hopefully that we can get a little bit more clarity on in the future eventually, whether it's going to be to the downside or whether it's going to be to the upside doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we're just looking for it to provide a little bit more clarity. Now, this is Boyle's daily chart. All right. Um, and so, as I mentioned, you know, bullish divergence, you can take a look here and there have been a couple trading opportunities, right? Whenever we make these lower lows, right? We have a low, lower low. We, we made a low and a higher low on the RSI. And you see, we had a pop to the upside, right? And then we make lower lows again here and we come near that bullish divergent trend line and we see a short little pop. All right. And over here, we just created new lows again, and we've seen a short little pop. But all of these pops have been very short lived and haven't been, you know, anything really worth celebrating. Um, now, when it comes to the main important levels that I'm looking at on Boyle, all right, uh, it's mostly a lot of support. We have support here at 283. Uh, you can see we came down here on the daily candle and then pushed back up. Afterwards, 283 is going to be my support level here. Uh, if we break below there, honestly, um, you know, being that this thing is making all time lows, there's no prior history to really go off of. So I'm using the fibs really to come up with price targets uh, using a math formula, the Fibonacci formula. Um, if we break below 283, uh, 213 is really, um, you know, where I have things potentially going down to boil. Now, that's pretty bearish. Um, that's a pretty big drop from where we're at right now. So hopefully we can stay above this 283 level. Uh, we do have a little bit of support right around 260. Okay, um, you could try to draw a support line right there, uh, being that that was our you know most recent low. Again, this thing is making all time lows. And honestly, since I've started covering Boyle on YouTube, uh, one of the main things that I've emphasized is that you know uh, buying something that's making 52 week lows or all time lows um, generally isn't the strongest investment theory. Okay. Uh, and the reason being is that, you know, you don't know where the bottom is going to be. Trying to time a bottom can be very painful. I know a lot of people have experienced that. You know, I've um, I've had a lot of one on one sessions and coaching sessions with with many people down five, six, seven figures uh, just from Boyle alone. If you guys are interested in any of those sessions, feel free to email me at exactly trades at gmail dot com. All right. And we can try to work something out and set one up for you guys. Um, and you know, you, you just want to keep that in mind, right? So even if you do want to buy boil and you are super bullish on natural gas, um, you know, you need to have some type of plan, right? You need to have, you know, some type of a stop loss or some type of risk management, maybe some type of a hedge to the downside in case things continue to go down. What are you going to do, um, to try to capitalize off of that or minimize your losses on the upside, uh, different things, right? You don't want to just throw money at something because it's cheap. Um, you know, it could get cheaper, right? Um, now above 283, 320 is going to be a big resistance level for me. Right now, I think we're going to be really trading in this range ultimately before we see if we break out to the upside or down below. Um, so, you know, once that happens, I'll go ahead and make a new uh, video and give you guys an update on some of the key levels that I'm looking at. Uh, remember the bullish divergence. We keep bouncing off of this trend line here. So, um, you know, eventually if this trend line breaks, because the more times you test the trend line, the weaker it gets, um, that would result in a pretty sharp move to the downside for Boyle. But it's done a good job of bouncing off of this bullish divergence trend line for now and um, been a decent buying opportunity. OK, uh, at least for, you know, some short term trades. Um, we take a look here at UNG. Uh, remember, I talked about the MACD, right? So something that I want to highlight here is if you take a look, uh, there was a 21 percent drawdown. All right. From when we got the MACD sell signal right here where the red line crossed below the yellow line. All right. And then once we got the entry signal right here where it crossed above 
um, you know, we saw a 16.89% move to the upside right after that, right? And that also coincided with some bullish divergence, right? Where we had a low here, we had a lower low, we had a low, we had higher low, and then we got the MACD crossover and we saw a big move to the upside. So there's definitely always opportunities. Um, and, you know, natural gas has been so volatile. I'm actually probably thinking about trading natural gas futures um, and day trading the natural gas futures as, I mean, it's it's just a super volatile commodity. Uh, volatility is what traders need, right? You can't really make a lot of money as a trader if things are only moving half a percent or 1% a day. Uh, that's definitely not the case with natural gas. It's big moves to the downside, big moves to the upside, lots of trading opportunities. And so I'm kind of interested in actually just trading the futures. Um, one thing that I'm looking at is the question marks here. Are we going to potentially see this MACD line curl back above and give a potential entry signal as it did in the past, right? Last time we saw a 16.89% move that it did that. And there is the chance that that could repeat itself. Now, whether or not it'll be a 16.89% or whether it'll just be a smaller percentage gain, uh, we can't really predict, but we can look for potential signals, right? Again, we're bouncing off of that bullish divergence trend line. See, we had a strong bounce there. We're seeing the MACD line start to curl up. All right, if this thing hit, uh, rejects the yellow line and heads back down, um, you know, that could be a warning sign that things are going to go lower. We have 606 and 642 are the major support levels here on UNG. Um, and then we have our three Fibonacci levels. Now, remember, I went over these in the beginning once we were talking about the natural gas futures. All right, we have the move down. We're retracing right now. OK, so uh, 660, 675 and 690. These are all three healthy retracement levels. All right. Ultimately, we're going to need to consolidate and break through these levels to get any type of a reversal where we put in a high and retest that high or potentially put in a high and a higher high. We must break through those levels. 715 is also going to be a big key level. As you can see, we bounced here. We bounced multiple times over here. And then we really flipped it to resistance afterwards. Um, and, you know, weren't really able to stay above there, right? We had a rally, a very short-lived rally up, uh, you know, and we had a look above and fail and actually came back down into the range. All right. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at on UNG. Uh, now, I spoke about the open interest, right? And so, you know, if you're not familiar, there's something called option contracts and you can buy a call option if you think something's going to go up and you can buy a put option if you think something's going to go down. And if we take a look at the May 12th and the May 19th expiration dates, we can see that there is a large amount. The heaviest amount is at the $3 strike price and it's also for calls, right? Now, <clears throat> that's pretty interesting being that Boyle is currently below $3, right? Now, it's not below $3 by much. But there is the most option bets betting that Boyle is going to be $3 or above by May 12th and May 19th of 2023. At the time of that recording, that's four days and 11 days away, those expiration dates. Now, when we look at UNG for the same option dates, we're seeing the $6.50 strike price with the highest level of concentration. And then uh, that's for May 12th. And if we actually go over here and look at May 19th, we see a lot more put option open interest, right? That's what the red is going to indicate on here. And we can see that there's actually a large amount of puts at the $6 strike price. So basically, there's a huge bet betting that UNG is going to be below $6 by May 19th of 2023. If we look at the put to call ratio for these, we can see that it's at 0.9, all right? For 0.9 for May 19th and 0.9 for um, UNG. Now, if we uh, go over and look some more into Boyle, and we extend things out a little bit further and, and look at things this summer. If you take a look at the June 16th option expiration date, again, we're seeing that highest amount of volume here at the $3 strike price. Um, again, calls are outweighing the puts, but look at all of the other call options right here, right? We're seeing a large amount of volume at the four, five, six, even the $10 strike price on Boyle. Um, and there's a 022 put to call ratio for Boyle in June 16th, all right? That's pretty bullish right there. That means that there's basically for there's basically one put option for every five uh, call options out there right now. So that's a pretty bullish, um, you know, on the open interest for Boyle, the further you go along, right? Um, when we were looking here at UNG open interest, it's at 0.9 and 0.92 for the next week and the next, uh, you know, two weeks, really. So uh, a little bit more bearish on the short term. But as you extend things further out, again, we, you're seeing a 0.2 um, at the put to call ratio. And if we look at UNG, UNG for that same expiration in June 16th has a 0.35 put to call, open, uh, put to call ratio here. 
And we're seeing a lot of concentration at the $7 and $8 strike prices for UNG, which is above its current price. Um, you know, there's about 146,000 uh, options, you know, open interest uh, in total being held right now. All right. And if we go out even further, this is Boyle, the January 19th of 2024 expiration date. Look at where the concentration is. It's at the $10 strike price in January 19th of 2024. Again, the put to call ratio is 0.31. Uh, so, you know, the, the put to call ratio gets a little bit more bullish the farther out in expiration you go. And the closer you are in expiration, you see that things are a little bit more bearish. And that makes a lot of sense, you know, with how painful, um, you know, the, the prices have been in natural gas. You know, it's been very bearish here lately. Uh, a lot of people aren't certain on, you know, when that's going to happen. Um, and when the bearishness is going to stop or if it's going to stop. But when you look farther out on the time, um, there are a lot more bullish bets. Now, I found it really, really interesting that the $10 strike price was, you know, the one with the highest open interest on Boyle uh, for the January of 2024 expiration. If we look here on UNG, the $10 strike price for, for UNG, which is much, you know, Boyle essentially would have to go up 300% uh, to reach $10. UNG, we're seeing the highest concentration at seven, right? And the put to call ratio here is actually 0 0.60. So, you know, it's not as bullish in UNG as it is in Boyle. Now that makes a lot of sense, okay? Because if you think about it, Boyle is the bullish leveraged ETF. So people are going to be looking at Boyle for bullish plays, right? Obviously. So when you look at UNG, maybe that one provides a little bit more clarity and a little less un, you know, is a little less unbiased, perhaps. That's a possibility. Um, being that, you know. It's just the United States natural gas fund. It's not the bullish or the bearish ETF. It's just the fund itself, right? And so we're seeing that that $7 strike price, uh, again, has the highest open interest right here. Um, and we're looking again at the 10, the $10 strike price has the second highest open interest. So, um, you know, most people are betting uh, by January 19th of 2024 that it's either going to be $7 and above or it's going to be $10 above when it comes to UNG. Now, that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. This is going to be a great place for you if you enjoy natural gas videos. I'm dropping videos just like this one every single week, covering some of the news, different data, as well as, you know, my analysis on the charts.